Hello, and welcome to my show. <laughs> you'll be back, soon you'll see. You remember to hit subscribe to me. You'll be back, time will tell. You'll remember these DIYs are super swell. Cause when push comes to shove, you should hit that like button and show this video some love. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. Let's get ready to DIY this King George hat. Let's go. First, we must always start every video out with our favorite cat, Miss Molly. But once we're ready, I'm going to pull up a reference photo of the King George hat because I don't have that great of a memory. And I'm going to start by making a mock-up on a piece of paper just to make sure I like the size of everything. And I'm just gonna use my ruler as a good measurement to have the bottom portion be the furry part. And then the top portion of this is going to be where all the jewels and everything go. The rough circumference of my head is about 25 inches. So I'm going to position the four pieces of his crown about six inches apart. I just thought that would be easier. And then I'm going to use the width of the ruler to give us that guide for how wide each of the little pillar thingies on his hat are. Next, I'm going to draw out the little shapes of the things that are on his crown. Forgive me, I don't actually know what these are called. I decided to make them each about three inches tall, which this thing ended up being huge. Mungus. So if you do want something a little bit more wearable, maybe three inches is too big, but this thing is amazing and humongous and definitely makes a statement as well as makes you about 10 inches taller than you normally would be. So I'm going to draw out one of these little things. Then I'm going to quarter this. That way I have an even shape in all four directions. I'm going to lay it back down in the center of where I've marked the six inches apart. Sorry, this clip is super blurry. Apparently my camera decided to take a little five minute vacation but I'm next drawing out the other little shape that goes next to it. And again, I halved that shape to make sure it was a mirror image of itself. And then I'm gonna draw out my little shapes on the white pieces, making sure that I like this. And while I was drawing the middle piece, I realized I really didn't like the shape of it. So this was a great time to correct any issues with the shape that I had. And once I have these three pieces in place so that I can repeat the pattern, I'm then going to cut these out and make sure to try it on. Make sure you like how it looks. When I try tried it on, I will admit at this stage, I was like, this thing's gonna be a little bit bigger than I anticipated. But I also was unwilling to draw it again and make it smaller. And I'm going to use a paper towel roll in the center of it to hold it together to give it structure. Since I like my mock-up, I'm then going to move to my cardboard. I've had this corrugated cardboard forever. I don't know if it's packing material or where it came from, but because this cardboard already had grooves on the backside, I felt like it would be a really good pick for this project because you didn't have to bend it all the way around your head. Another great thing to use is just cereal boxes if that's what you happen to have, but I'm just laying out my guide and then I'm repeating the pattern, making sure that I have four of each piece. And then once I have it all drawn, out, I'm going to go through with my box cutter and cut out all of the straight lines against the ruler. That's just a lot easier. I kind of tag team this between my ruler and also scissors. I don't love the scissors with it, but some of this was just a little too hard to use the box cutter on. So you're just going to cut out all of your shapes. And then voila, here's what the final cutout looks like. I left some extra on one side in case I needed to add anything. And then my piece of cardboard was actually not long enough for the look that I wanted to go for. Again, this thing is absolutely huge. So each section is actually 10 inches. So I'm just adding some extra pieces on. Then I'm gonna take this pearl trim that I think I bought at Joann's or the dollar store. I feel like you could find this anywhere, but he had some kind of pearl detailing on his crown. So I'm just gonna hot glue these pearls all around the bottom as well as on all of these long pieces. And this is where you will burn the potatoes out of your fingers. My fingers hurt so bad after this portion, but it looks so good in the end and it's, it really does elevate this project.
Once you have all the pieces cut out, I forgot to include there's also a top little piece. I'm then just going to grab some gold spray paint and I'm going to spray paint everything gold. You could also just use gold paint. I think spray paint happens to be easier. It's also a lot easier on these little beads, but I'm just gonna spray paint the backside for anything that will show. And then I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then spray paint the front side, making sure that all of the beads have been spray painted. Next up, I grabbed some rhinestones. These I got from Joann's, but I actually ended up getting like five five packs of rhinestones because I couldn't make up my mind which one I liked best. So in reality, any rhinestones you choose are going to look great and super extra. You don't have to be as ridiculously picky as I was. I spent way too much money on rhinestones and then had to justify it by letting my little niece make crowns for herself in hopes that all the money I spent on rhinestones would have been worth it. I'm just going to glue a bunch of rhinestones in random patterns. Because I couldn't get exactly what King George's costume has, I just decided go for it, be extra, keep gluing, and then I glued some more and some more. And in the end, my crown is just ridiculously sparkly and over the top and I am living for it and I love it. <laughs> fur portion of his crown. I'm going to take this $8 bathrobe that I got at Goodwill that you will see in a later video. So hit subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, but I'm going to take one of the sleeves off of it and I'm going to use this as the faux fur detail. And this stuff sheds so badly. I had to make sure a portion of it was folded inward or otherwise I would just end up with white fur all over me. But I'm just going to cut out a long strip and I'm going to fold it under and then hot glue it on around. That way it will stay in place. And then I'm gonna grab some of the Tulip fabric paint. It's the soft kind that's not supposed to make the fabric super hard and sticky, but if you don't have any, you can also just use black acrylic. And I'm going to take one of my paint brushes and just brush it on to make it look the way his costume had looked. Now I'm gonna add the internal structure to this, which is a paper towel roll. And I'm going to take each of the four pieces and just hot glue them onto my paper towel holder. Next, I'm gonna grab an oversized piece of red material. This is a curtain that I got from Goodwill for I think two or three dollars, but I'm just gonna quarter it and then I'm gonna cut out a hole for where my paper towel will go through it. And then I'm gonna hot glue the top of the paper towel roll on just so it doesn't move around. And then I'm gonna take some batting from the inside of a $3 Walmart pillow. And then I'm gonna start stuffing the inside of this. And this part is totally subjective. I went back and forth with how fluffy I should make my hat. So I kept just stuffing it, putting it on my head, looking at it, stuffing it, putting it on my head, looking at it, unstuffing it, back and forth, till you get the desired shape that you want. I actually should have made my red material a little bit bigger. If you make it bigger, then you can actually just attach it to the paper towel roll, but mine was not big enough. So I had to grab another piece of red material to lay on top. So you're just gonna hot glue that circle on top, which does make it look nice and clean and not messy. And then once that is dry, I'm then just gonna fold under all of the white fur. Again, making sure to tuck it in so this white fur does not get all over your hair and get all over everything. And then once I have the fit correct, I'm then gonna fold over the material at the end of it. And now it is complete, at least at that part. There's also this thing at the top of his crown, which I ended up using a giant popsicle stick just to make sure that this would actually hold up in place. And then I just kind of cut a portion of it off and cut open my corrugated cardboard and just stuffed this on top with some hot glue and added a couple more gems. And 
And then to get that signature hairstyle, I'm just gonna use my curling iron to curl two pieces right by my face and then just braid the rest of it down at a nice ribbon bow and you are ready for this hairstyle. I'm then gonna put my row back on just to show you guys what it could look like in a future video. And here is our amazing crown. This thing is awesome. End of story, amazing and awesome. like this video so if you didn't hear me before you should hit the thumbs up button and also you should subscribe if you want to see more of my delicious DIYs and also how to make the rest of this fabulous outfit hmm see you later darlings bye bye you'll be back time will tell you'll remember these DIYs are super swell